all this talk of creating your own materials is all well and good, but, but it can be a little bit time consuming. So what we're going to do now is just have a quick look at the materials libraries that come with 3D Studio Max. Now there are various different types of material libraries for various different things, but what we're going to do at the moment is we're just going to concentrate on the standard material library, okay? So I've got my object selected over here and I'm going to apply my material to it or assign my material, show my background. And now what I want to do is I want to say, well actually there's a particular material I want on that. Maybe it's a brick or maybe I, I don't know. There's just something and it's particular that I want to use. And really, I don't have the time to sit down and go through worrying about, you know, getting the right 2D image for the con for the displacement map, maybe the right 2D image for the bump map or for the diffuse color map or anything like that. I just I just want it made. Just want it there. Just want to take something off the shelf and chuck it on there, and that's it. That's job done. Doesn't need to be anything more special than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this get material option. Okay, so I'll get material, and that's going to bring up my material map browser okay now within that I can browse from and we've got here new okay now normally it comes up as being new it's just because the last thing I did was to look into the scene so if I was going to pick a, a new material I've got some of these I've you see my standard material we've got lots of other materials in here that we could use and we could pick from so we've got a composite material uh, we've got a multi sub object material that we're going to talk about a little bit later on and we've also got sort of these textures. You know, we've picked bitmap before, we've picked ray tracing before. But what I want to do is I want to pick from the material library. Okay, now we don't have a material library open. So what I'm going to do is come down here to file, go to open, and I'm going to browse for a material library. Now at the moment, this is looking in our video training folder. Yeah? We don't have any material libraries in there as such because we don't have any maps either in that folder. So what we're going to have to do is go to our C drive, program files, Autodesk, 3D Studio Max 2010, and you see we've also got a material libraries in here. It's rather confusing and slightly irritating that all of your free material libraries and free maps are in the install directory just means that every time you want to use them you've got to go off to the install directory. Um, your only other recourse is to start doing something slightly more intermediate and advanced which is to actually move them location on your hard drive and then repath that inside of uh, 3D Studio Max. It's a little bit more advanced, it's not really anywhere I want to take you at the moment so what I'm going to advise you to do is to stick with having them in the default uh, placement in the install directory and just work around it really. Um, I'm going to open up my materials library and you will see in there we have got a whole load of material libraries here. Now not all of them are going to be things that we want to talk about at the moment. Okay, So for example the Autodesk Max Pro materials, these are more of the Mental Array Pro material libraries. We've got a Mental Array architecture and design so we're not really worried about that either. These architectural materials, again we're going to talk about the architectural material in a moment, uh, but really what I want to do is just come up here and go to 3ds Max material and then click open. So you can see what we've got here is we've got quite a few different um, things in here. Not a lot of it makes a lot of sense to us, does it? Because it's just, it's just names. So what I like to do is I like to bring up the names plus an icon. Uh, but again, this can be a little bit confusing because you know what's always, what are the actual materials. Well, if here, if I say show just the materials, so I take off the maps, what we've got here is just like a balloon material. That's a good one. I've got a, a bricks material here, another brick material, yellow brick road, um, some kind of a cartoon hatch material. And really what I can do is I can just pick whichever one that I'm interested in and I can use that. So for example, if we want brick, I'll go for my bricks and I'll just double click that and I'll minimize this off. And if I show this in viewport, let's go up a level. Oh, actually let's apply it to something first of all, that would probably help, wouldn't it? 
you can see that what we've got here is a very quick, very instant brick material and it's come in, it's got its diffuse colour and it's got its bump mapping already done. And that is ready for me just to pull into my viewport and press render. There you go, as simple as that. Absolutely no problem at all. So every time I want to use a material that's in a library, I just need to go get material, open the library, browse to the library, which in this case it's gone back to the video training, and pick something from it. So we've got this cartoon hatch here, that was one that we saw before. Uh, another really great material that I want to show you that's really worth having in your arsenal is right down at the bottom is this x-ray material. So what I'll do now is I'll add that material to here and that material to here. And if I minimize my materials editor down. What's interesting is we're going to see three completely different styles of materials all in the same render. And there you go. We've got a very much a ray trace, oh, sorry, not a ray trace, a, um, a sort of a, a, an x-ray material here, which looks great, especially when you put it against the black. We've got this kind of cartoon hatch over here, which again is great. Uh, and we've got a completely different style again, is we've got our, um, our brick material. So that's three different styles of material, all in the same render. All of them, we didn't really have to create. We were just taking things out of a library. Now, you may well remember as well that we've got this option in here, which was put to library. So let me go along and pick our last teapot here. And let's say I want uh, a nice kind of bluey color. And I want that to be quite shiny. And I want it to be reflective. So I'll pick a ray trace material, just like we spoke about before. And within that, I'm going to pick a, uh, a bitmap. And that bitmap, again, I'm going to have to browse for this, unfortunately, is in Autodesk 2000 Map. Um, where am I going? Maps. There we go. And Reflection. Let's view those as thumbnails. And I'll have... That was the one. That's my reflection map. There we go, it's my background. And if I go back up and back up a level again, I'll make this about 25%. Apply it to that. So let's just test that material by looking at it in the viewport as a render. So say you've been working with this and we think, yes, that material, that's it's brilliant. It's exactly what I want. There you go, you see, we're seeing, uh, we've even got the, the, the transparency through this material. That's fantastic. And we're getting a good reflection. And I think, yeah, that's it. I just want to tick on two-sided, which I will do. And then that material will be ready to be saved. Now, I want to use that material time and time again. So I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Shiny Blue. And I'm going to place that directly in my material name, Shiny Blue. There we go. Click OK. Now, you might think, oh, it's not really done much. I pick a new material over here and I say get material you'll notice as I come down here what we're hopefully going to find or I'm going to look very silly is a new material called shiny blue which will probably be under S and there we go shiny blue standard material freshly made and looking remarkably like the one we have in our materials editor so there we have it we can now make basic materials uh, hopefully we know a little bit of our way around the materials editor itself and we can start picking out materials from a library and even saving them back into that library so that we can use them time and time again. I'm going to draw this one to a close now and what we're going to look at next is going to be sub-object materials.